Jacob was an ordinary guy who lived most of his life in a small town in northern Maine. Among the dense seven green forests, a young man lived in harmony with the nature of his native land. His mom and dad died in a fire caused by faulty electrical wiring. The boy was five years old. The expression of inconsolable grief on his grandfather's face was forever etched in his memory. Donald Moore raised his grandson, giving him everything he needed. The man worked as a ranger in the forestry department of the district and from early childhood instilled in Jacob a love of the forest. Mr. Moore often took his grandson on a tour of the territory. The man, without hiding, talked about the problems and subtleties of his profession, cherishing in his heart a hope that his grandson would become his successor. When Donald Moore died, Jacob, as an adult guy, found himself at the crossroads of the two roads. On the one hand, he could stay in the town and follow in his grandfather's footsteps, and on the other, go to the city and taste a new life, unknown to him before. Unable to make a choice, Jacob felt inner anxiety. To conquer a big city, he set off with the onset of spring, as if seen in this some kind of sign. In New York, Jacob was very surprised by the rapid pace of life in the metropolis, which was very different from the quiet life in his town. As it turned out, it was quite difficult to find a job. The owners of firms and companies did not feel much joy at the sight of the guy from the outback. But Jacob didn't give up. Once again, offering his services to a construction company, he did not even realize that he would receive a positive response. In a new place, Jacob settled in pretty quickly. The management appreciated the skill and the rumination of the guy. Gradually, the young builder got his own client base, and his skills became very popular in the labor market. One day, Jacob received an order with a house call. As the manager explained, one wealthy client has some problems with plumbing. The guy had carried out such orders before, so he was not surprised at the application at all. Having collected the necessary tool, he went to the address. At the gates of a posh mansion, Jacob was met by a pretty girl, who introduced herself as Diana. She complained that the faucet in her bathroom was leaking. The cause of the breakdown and a faulty note were found quite quickly. The entire repair lasted no more than an hour, and a satisfied client paying for the work gave Jacob a decent number of tips. The guy refused as much as he could, but Diana was relentless. Knowing that Jacob's rented apartment was located at the other end of the city, the girl offered him a ride. The young builder gladly agreed. On the way to the guy's house, Diana, quite unexpectedly for Jacob, offered to have a snack in a cafe. Not that the guy was too embarrassed, he just felt an acute social difference between him and this wealthy girl. She was the daughter of rich parents, and he was a poor orphan. Diana had the opportunity to give a large number of tips, while he had to live from paycheck to paycheck. It's just a dinner, Diana offered with a smile. Jacob didn't hesitate for long. Moreover, he could pay for himself because the money received for the work was in his pocket. The cafe really turned out to be cozy and nice. It seemed to Jacob, who was hungry for the day, that he had never tasted anything better in his life. Chatting merrily over a cup of tea, the young people did not notice how it began to get dark outside the window. The evening flew by unnoticed, and they had to go home. Let's meet tomorrow, Jacob suggested, unaware that he had unwittingly read the girl's thoughts. Diana smiling sweetly agreed, thus laying a foundation for their further relationship. Their romance developed rapidly. There was everything, but case of roses, walks under the moon, and sleepless nights full of tender feelings. In Diana's shining eyes, the guy laughed so reciprocity and joy from the fact that they were together. One day, the lovers decided to go out of town to have a picnic in nature. Once on a highway, Diana noticeably increased speed, despite the fact that it had rained in the morning and the road was wet. Maybe we should slow down, Jacob asked nervously. But the girl, ignoring the warnings of the young man, added more speed. If Diana had known that a sharp turn was waiting for her ahead, she would certainly have slowed down. But she saw the danger too late, and knocking down the fence, the car flew off the road at full speed. The main blow fell on the passenger's side. Their bags worked properly, but they could not save Jacob from terrible injuries. 
the guy had both legs damaged, and any movement caused him unimaginable suffering. Ironically, the culprit of the accident, Diane, escaped with only a couple of bruises, while Jacob had to spend a long time in a trauma department. The ambulance arrived on time and hospitalized the guy. In the first day after the accident, Jacob, suffering from pain in his limbs, waited for Diana to come to visit him. But she didn't come that day. Or the next, or even a week later. Jacob spent about a month in the hospital. During all this time, he underwent two operations. But only when he was discharged, he learned that he would not be able to walk normally. It required an expensive operation and long-term rehabilitation in a center specializing in injuries of the musculoskeletal system. In the meantime, the guy could move with great difficulty and then leaning on a cane. Jacob could not understand why Diana did not visit him during the entire period of hospitalization. Tormented by this question, the young man immediately after the hospital went to the girl. The journey took him about an hour. Jacob didn't get to the right place a couple of stops and got out earlier. It hurt him to see the sympathetic looks of others on the bus. Sweating and limping desperately, he still got to the girl's house. There were a lot of expensive cars at the gate, and loud music was playing. Jacob entered the courtyard. Fortunately, the door was unlocked, but he didn't have to look for the girl. She saw him first. On Diana's face, a condescending smile froze, which reflected her entire attitude towards Jacob. You shouldn't have come. I thought you'd figure it out for yourself, she said instead of greeting. Jacob, confused by such treatment, did not know what to answer. The whole world was collapsing before his eyes. Diana at the party had already drunk a couple of cocktails, so she behaved somewhat cheekily towards her former lover. The guy's cheeks fled with fire, and desperately limping, he rushed away from the hated place. He was followed by laughter and snide remarks, but Jacob no longer heard them. The poor cripple has never experienced such a shame in his life. Jacob could not return to work at a construction company. The guy decided not to stay in the city who had treated him so cruelly. Jacob was no longer held by anything in a place where at one time he had to experience happiness and then grief. Returning to his hometown, the guy, ashamed of the views of his acquaintances, led a reclusive lifestyle. This continued until a neighbor came to him. With her, the woman brought a small puppy. She left him in a shoe box, the bottom of which was covered with a soft cloth. Strange as it sounds, that it was Ted Pet that brought Jacob out of the state of depression. After all, the baby needed daily care, and involuntarily, the guy got used to his new duties. On the walk, he was desperately limping, barely keeping up with the puppy, who was trying to catch all the butterflies in the neighborhood. The guy named the pet Feng, in memory of the novel he loved by Jack London. Imperceptibly, three years have passed. Fang grew up and turned into a real handsome man and a helper for Jacob. The guy, disappointed by the experience of living in a megapolis, decided to devote himself to working in a forest. In forestry, his request was treated with understanding. In the town, everyone honored the late Donald Moore and had no less respect for his grandson. Jacob got the same plot that his grandfather had. Walking with Fang along the winding first paths, the young forester rested his soul, thrown off the cross device formed after Diana's desperate lack from his heart. One day, at the door of the supermarket, Jacob met an acquaintance, with whom he had once worked in the auto repair shop. After greeting Jacob with restraint, he told him that Diana was now living in a cheap motel, and things were going badly for her. As it turned out, Diana's father was convicted of securities fraud, and all his property was confiscated. The girl, left without means of subsistence, now works at a car wash in order to summon earned a piece of bread. When Jacob found out about this, not a single muscle moved in his face. The fact was that a persistent thought had been stuck in his brain for a long time. Jacob, having shown remarkable abilities in animal husbandry, decided to open his own poultry farm. Under this case, with the supportive friends, he took a loan from the bank. He was able to return the invested money after a year. Jacob has created an extensive retail network, supplying products to the entire northeast of the United States. When the income became tangible, Jacob was able to go to the clinic, where he underwent surgery.
After undergoing rehabilitation, the guy felt like a different person. Doctors wide with each other that soon he would be able to walk normally. In the same place, Jacob met a nurse named Rachel, with whom he had a stormy affair that grew into something more than an ordinary passion. Jacob and Rachel got married six months after they met. A year later, the happy couple had their first child. In Josh, young parents see their future and the meaning of life. Fang the dog was very happy about new family addition, because now he will have someone to play with all day long and along in front of the house.